guys get in the gym, they work their tail off, and the GAs are the ones they call all the time uh, to help them with stuff. So it's just been a tremendous group. And obviously, they laid a great foundation last year, and now 26 and 6, 13 and 5 in this league. Um, I think we've won seven in a row, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe 10 out of 11. They've just done a phenomenal job. And uh, hats off, congratulations to Utah State uh, for winning the league. Uh, we do also know, um, Utah State, you did not come to Lawler. But congratulations on the league title. Um, but I couldn't be more happy for these guys. They have busted their tail uh, on and off the court. They represent us the way we want to be represented. So uh, to go out with a win tonight and get this thing to 26 wins, um, just very, very pleased with the, the efforts that they've made over the years. Questions? Coach, just, you know, can you talk about the momentum that this group has had now these last couple of games and just how important it was to come out and finish the regular season off with another yeah, win tonight? Yeah, I just think, you know, we had, we had that little blip in January where, you know, we had beaten Air Force and we'd beaten Fresno at, at Fresno, and then we come home and we get beat by uh, Boise. And <coughs> that rocked us a little bit. And when you get hit and you get rocked and you got to go on the road and your first – you know, your first road game is San Diego State um, after that. And then I don't like how we traveled to Wyoming. That's on me. Uh, it took us for freaking ever. Um, and that's on me. And we, and we didn't play particularly well there, but it's not an easy place to play when you've just lost two in a row. And so what I like is this is a mature group. We lost three in a row, and then we got we got going again. We learned from that. And then we lost uh, New Mexico by a basket, a point. Um, and since then, we haven't lost. I mean, they just, they grow every time there's a setback. And that's what setbacks should be about. And we teach these guys, you're going to have setbacks not just on the court, you're going to have setbacks in life. You can't let the setbacks not allow you to grow. Setbacks should allow you to grow and the opportunity to grow. And these guys have done a phenomenal job of every setback we've had. And there's been very few this year. Uh, they've grown. And nobody's playing any better basketball than we are. The, the team that was playing just as well as we were was the team we just played. Um, Boise was the other one, and we got both of them this week. So we're going to Vegas uh, playing very, very good basketball. And I can tell you these guys, they didn't get cut down nets um, in the league. So they're going to be extremely motivated and excited mm -hmm. to play in Vegas. Mm -hmm. How important was it, Coach, just halfway through the second half there just to change things up defensively to limit UNLV's offensive rebounds and those second chance points? Well, I thought we did a really good job on the backboard in the first half, and then we had some slippage to start the second half. But they're really good uh, at attacking the, ba attacking the backboard. And we know that. Uh, but we've told our guys that when we're a good rebounding team, our ceiling just gets higher uh, because we're, we're so good at a lot of other things. And when the board play at both ends, goes up, then our ceiling goes up. And, you know, they made a heck of a run. We got it to over 10, maybe two or three times. And then they take the lead, maybe 40, 48, 47 maybe. Um, and then I thought from that point on, uh, we really defended at a high level. And the last eight minutes was, we always call that our winning time. And uh, these guys did a great job in winning time. I guess I would love to have all the seniors kind of say what it was yeah. like to wrap things up here in Lawler with the big win over the Rebels. I guess we can go Keenan all the way down if that's cool. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, my first two years here, we uh, got swept uh, by them both times. And we really, uh, from each team, we really held that in our minds going through the summer and just to now, really. And we was motivated this summer. and. I'm so proud of these guys. I love these guys to death. Uh, it's just great. It's just great. It feels good to come back and bounce back, like Coach said, go through adversity and just stay together and stay connected, How, uh, what our motto is right now. Yeah, I think it's huge <clears throat> just to be able to, you know, not just finish this game, but, you know, finish the year, the, the regular season, you know, the way we did, you know, compared to last year. So um, no, it's definitely a big win for us and uh, definitely want to, you know, keep taking this momentum, you know, to Vegas. Uh, very similar to Keenan. Last year we lost this game. Um, it's a very similar situation. Last game of the year, uh, same UNLV team, um, and we knew uh, at the end of the game last year we kind of let the game slip. So we wanted to make sure we didn't let that same thing happen. But uh, obviously, great win and doing in front of a sellout crowd um, was awesome and a great way to end the se end the regular season. And hopefully, we can keep it rolling in the postseason. 
Uh, yeah, just like some of the guys said, um, remembered what happened last season at the very end, and um, you know that might have carried through to the Mount West tourney. So yeah, we kept that in our mind all this summer, all this season, and uh, knew it was going to be a tough game tonight, and we're able to pull through. Like you said, in front of a sold-out crowd, which was massive, and then you know, great to get a dub with uh, you know my brothers and all these seniors. So yeah. Jared, you guys all mentioned the taste from last year. Does it still linger as far as the postseason from last year? And I guess just how focused are you guys as we head into uh, the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean, last year we ended the season uh, losing four games in a row. Uh, so we knew, and I believe I saw a stat last year, we didn't win a game in March. Um, and last year, or obviously now we've winning games, so we proved that we can win games. Um, but you know, it was something that kind of, like you said, it lingered around and it still is something that, ha that is in the back of our minds, knowing that we went to the Mount West Tournament, got bounced in the first round. Uh, so we're going to do everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen and make a run. And like Coach said, we're hungry to cut down some nets. We felt like, uh, you know, maybe if we could have got a little lucky tonight and New Mexico was able to win and we would have been cutting down nets. But uh, it's just going to make us even hungrier for once we get to the Mount West Tournament. Yeah, Keenan, tell me about your motivation heading into Vegas and then after that or wherever you guys may land, knowing that these, is a, these are your last minutes in silver and blue. Uh, I'm going to make them last. Uh, we, we uh, like, like I said at Utah State, we're on a mission, and we're still on that mission right now. Uh, I don't want this to end. Uh, I love these guys, and I just want to keep playing with them. And God takes us how far we can go. And... We'll just keep staying together, really. Hunter, what is your time in silver and blue, man, man and to finish this thing kind of strong, at least regular season-wise? Yeah, I think it's been great. It's been great. Um, you know, just the, the, the love and support from the community has been amazing, you know, throughout my time here, you know, on and off the court. Um, I think this, you know, community is special. You know, they obviously, you know, care about sports and care about us, but, you know, they care about us as people as well. Um, I think that's the, the biggest thing that I've, you know, learned here is just, you know, the support, you know, it goes beyond sports. It goes beyond just at the university. Um, so just a you know big appreciation to everybody out there that's been supporting us and uh, just me personally as well. Uh, I think it's you know been great and um, you know that support it it goes a long way you know longer than a lot of people realize. I've really been hoping for a Daniel Foster showing at the podium, man. Uh, you you might not always make the highlight reel every night, but you certainly make winning plays every night. Just how do you see your role? And um, you know I feel like there's not a lot of D1 players that are content with not being a you know a threat on offense, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so kind of just worked into that role throughout the season. Um, just knowing that coming in off the bench, trying to bring that energy um, on both ends of the floor, just trying to make the right play throughout the game, whether, you know, just getting the boxing out, you know, getting that layup or something like that, you know. So I think just trying to do whatever I can to help the team win is my role and um, just embrace that. And uh, yeah, things have been working so far. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to add that. Uh, seriously, this is probably the best glue guy in the country. Hey, um, and I think it's really, it's, it's really hey. rare, uh, like you guys mentioned, to have somebody like Daniel. Uh, so I know all three of us and the rest of the team are so grateful because not everybody in Division One basketball is able to accept that role. Um, and he's shooting the three ball well, too, so that always helps. Daniel, what did it mean to play in front of your family here tonight? Uh, yeah, definitely a special moment. Um, obviously, I had all my, fo my folks from Australia come over, and then my brother, and then um, my girlfriend, and then a lot of my mom's family um, down from Central Valley hadn't been able to make it out to a game, so my aunties and all that. So <coughs> definitely a special moment. Um, after this, going to go celebrate with them and, yeah, just embrace that. I guess for all of you guys just, you know, playing in front of your families and that this was the last time you played at Lawler Event Center, did that really sink in at all when you were walking out there on senior night with your families before tip off? I'm gonna go left and right. You wanna go me first? Um Yeah, uh, definitely a special moment. Um, can't really replicate that sort of senior night experience, you know, getting that love from the crowd and all your teammates and um, having your family out on the court is definitely something that never happened to me before. So a very special moment. Um, I'm sure they loved it, and yeah, couldn't have asked for a better senior night um, from everyone. Yeah, it was pretty cool being able to walk out there with the mom, dad, my grandma. Um, so I know that it was pretty cool to be able to have my grandma flying from Texas. Uh, so that was pretty cool, and uh, have my teammates there, my coaches. Uh, it was a pretty cool, pretty cool moment. And then obviously the Reno community embraces all of us. So uh, very grateful. Yeah, I think it was, you know. Huge, you know what I'm saying, just having, you know, our family is our biggest supporters, you know what I'm saying, here for us that, you know, been with us, you know, this whole journey, you know what I'm saying, since we were kids. Um, so and that was definitely great to have and, you know, definitely going to be a special moment that, you know, I'll keep forever. Uh, for me, it was good uh, having my family come out here from Florida. Uh, they rarely come out here and things of that nature and just for them to uh, come to 
my senior night and just be there and just be present. It, it meant the world to me, really, uh, being that I don't see them a lot. So, yeah. Jared, I know you recently said in an interview, you guys, you feel like you're, this group is more connected this year. Could you just touch on that a little bit and why you guys feel like you have been so much more connected? Uh, I, I think college basketball, and I've said it before, but you know everybody understanding their role uh, is important. And I think we've done a really good job, uh, one through 15. Uh, you include our GAs and coaches. Everybody's done a really good job being connected. Uh, Key and I both break it every time when we break our huddle, staying connected. Um, but you know, I don't think there's one certain thing I could point out. But uh, I think off the court, when you have a good group of guys that likes hanging out with each other, uh, always translates on the court. And I know all of us uh, hang out with each other all the time. And and even tonight, we'll do we'll have, have some fun hanging out with each other. Just now, as you do head down to Las Vegas, Jared, to start with you, just what? Um, just now, you have to prep for two teams: Colorado State or San Jose State. I guess kind of what's that like this week, having to scout for a little bit of both before you know who you're going to play? Uh, I know the coaches will take a look at it. Um, and then obviously, we just played both those teams, I don't know, the last week, two weeks. So um, you know, play both of them twice. So we pretty much have a scouting report. And then we'll just add, add a couple more things, maybe some new, off, new offense added or defense. So I don't think it'll be too many changes either. Good. Uh, so, <laughs> 